Hi everyone, I'm Tamara Rund and I am here because my amazing friend and neighbor, Avitz, wanted to try out his new sound and um, microphone system. So I'm the guinea pig, lucky me. So I am going to demonstrate how to paint a painting. Usually, normally, I go outside and paint on location. The sceneries here in Israel are amazing and beautiful and breathtaking. You could drive for 15, 20 minutes and really see a new view every single time. Um, and I love painting outdoors. So today I'm going to be painting from a photograph that was taken in one of these landscapes nearby. Um, it's convenient to paint from a photograph sometimes, especially when you need a videographer to video you in a studio, but also you have the advantage of not getting bitten by all different bugs and getting sunburned or wind and rain. So really, it's really good practice for when you want to um, paint outdoors and do those landscape paintings on location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this photo you see here of the landscape and I'm going to try to do a quick demo, a 40 minute drawing. Um, I do these to sort of keep my pace up and focus on the more important things in a painting. I break it down to the main colors, main sh color shapes and forms. Um, over here I have my palette set up with the primary colors um, in both warm and cool tones. So I have the um, titan titanium white, um, Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, um, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and lemon yellow, um, lemon cadmium. So that way I have all the primary colors there wait waiting for me. And what I do is I begin with a sketch of where each thing will be placed and right away go in and paint it over. I always prime my canvas first with some sort of warm color because the landscapes here are very lit up and very warm and I want it to feel warm and cozy. So I prepare that in advance. And what I do is I have a mixture here of turpentine and linseed oil. Um, the reason it's a mixture is because I'm only going to be painting really with one layer for this painting because I'm going to be doing it super quickly. So I'm going to just lay in that horizon line, which is pretty straight in this painting, and put in the cloud shapes. Now, of course, because this is a quick demo, I'm not going to get caught up on the exact shapes and locations of the different things. Also, when you're painting outdoors, things change pretty quickly. The lighting conditions, the clouds move really fast. So I don't want to um, get into a habit of painting really slowly or again caught up with all those little details because in the end I could focus on which details I find to be um, more important. Here I'm going to focus on the shadow shapes in the background and go into the strong diagonal shape I see here. Just mark that in so that I have something leading me into the landscape like so. Now I'm going to mark some prime um, lines here, some very important lines that will help me focus on color and shapes afterwards. But the rest is going to stay pretty simple. Making sure my perspective is correct. And once I have this in there, it might look like nothing to you, but to me it's the whole beginning of a painting. Then I start mixing up my sky colors. So I will start from the sky because that's the background and I want everything to look like it comes on top of it and the sky is the farthest away. I'll start with the sky, start with the background, move to the middle ground and continue on to the foreground. I will only go into details and shapes of those trees and plants once I am done with laying in the basic colors of everything. I will make sure I take care of um, atmospheric perspective, making the back colors much lighter and cooler 
then the color is here in front so that um, my eye moves in to the painting just like it does when I'm outside looking at a landscape. Now, with the sky, you could always play around with the colors because skies change a lot. But here I'm going to stick to what I have because I want to do this really fast. I have a very vibrant blue there. I'm just mixing up a whole bunch because I have a big space there in the sky. Wet my paintbrush and I will start going in. The color is a little too much ultramarine blue. I will add some of the Prussian blue into it. The knockback and a little bit of yellow. I added a little too much there, so I will go back to the blue and add it in. But again, not getting too caught up on the different colors. I actually like that color. It'll stay. So I go in and cover up that sky. I will be coming back with the clouds, but right now I want to cover as much space as I could with the sky. The clouds go on top of the sky. And I am mixing in the different variations of blue while I'm working along. I'm not working with layers here, as I said before, because I really want to get it in as fast as possible. So. Let's just lay it in there. And I will move to the brighter colors in the lower part of the sky. They're much more, much brighter. Lit up. Now I have some of that red and yellow mixing in a little from the underpainting. Not so worried about that. I could go back and clean up those colors later if I have time. But right now, it's not bothering me too much. And I'll move on to the clouds. So in the clouds, I'm using the same color, just adding a little bit of that alizarin crimson to get the grayness of the clouds the dark part of the clouds. And I will go in and just paint in those darker areas. It's a little too dark, I could go lighter right away, so I'm adding some white in. And later I'll go over with the white bright colors. Right now I'm doing the dark, dark to light. In oil paints we always start dark to light for a few reasons. First of all, the white that we use, especially the, the titanium white, is very sticky and will make the other paints just mix right into it and stick right to that white. We'll never get to the darker colors afterwards. So this way, we avoid that. It's always easier to go lighter than it is to go darker once you have the colors down. I've laid in that gray color for the clouds. I'm going to move on to the whites. Now, I don't really need to make a pure white, even for the lighter areas, because my paint is very wet, so it's going to mix right into the gray colors, and that's what I want it to do. I'll 
I'll lay it on heavier in the areas I want to be whiter, but the rest I'll just like mix it right in and take advantage of the wet into wet medium. Now I have a lot of areas in the clouds here, the brighter areas, but I see have very pink hues. So I'm going to use the Lizard and Crimson to go in and brighten them up just as soon as I'm done with these lighter gray areas. There we go. Now I ran out of my white, which happens often. I'm going to add more of it here. I'm taking some of my alizarin crimson. I'm mixing it in with the white. I still have the other colors on my paintbrush and that's fine because I'm still in that sky. So I'm just going to take that and try to follow the shapes of the clouds to add in that nice pink bright color. basically finished laying in the colors that I want in the sky. I might go back afterwards at the end and fix things up because colors always affect each other. But right now I'm going to move down to the background there in the landscape. And I will start with the darker browns, because we said dark to light, and I'll make my way down there. Now I'm working my way downwards, even though I haven't really finished the background completely, but I don't want to go into the next level of detail of all those little white rocks and stones and terraces until I actually lay in the basic colors of the whole painting, because I have a very limited amount of time right now to work on this. So I will try to get that in and then Whatever I have time for, I will go back and As you can see, whenever I have a color I'm using that I think could, um, the painting could benefit from in a different location, I will go back and use it there. It's just a waste to remix and come back to each place. So I see I mixed up this really useful gray, medium gray, and I'm just adding it in in a few spaces. Also, as you could see, the middle ground has the most detail here, except for those few areas right up front. I will come back to those details. I just want to lay in the front, and then I will go back and do all those details in every different location and work my way up again. So. I am doing the foreground now, and then I will go back to all those little details along the way. You know, sometimes you mix up color on your palette, and once you put it down on the canvas, it looks totally different, which makes a lot of sense because my palette is actually a white palette, and the canvas itself is primed with that yellow underneath, so it kind of changes the hue. That's At this point where I have everything laid in already, the different colors I'm going to do, I'm going to start putting in detail. In the background, I'm going to put a lot less detail, even though 
in the photo, it actually has a lot, a lot of trees and plants. I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple and simplify those details. Not go into so much contrast there. Keep it pretty flat because I really want the lines up front here and the little trees over here and there to be um, where, where our eye lingers. Um, which is why I'm going to put more color contrast and more value contrast there than I will in the little details here. So I'm going to go in with a dark green for some of the bushes back there. I'll make one green for all of them. I'm not going to vary it so much just to keep things simple again. So here I finished off um, a painting. I basically did it in about 40 minutes um, on and off. And this is what came of it. If I had more time, I would work in more. But when you're outside, you really don't have that much of an option. Um, you work quickly. So as you see, I worked from the sky towards the foreground and I made a landscape painting and it was fun. I hope you enjoyed watching. And thank you again to Avitz. Bye.